Hello, in this video we're going to look at an eigenvalue inequality for a correlation matrix. Now everything in this video is known and perhaps widely known. It's just a small piece of it that I noticed that I couldn't find a reference for. So I'm going to present the ideas and then I'm going to ask if anyone knows a reference at the end. So let's let A be a K by K correlation matrix such that the entries are rho sub ij and this is where rho ij is 1 if i and j equal and if not it's just whatever the value is between negative 1 and 1 and a is symmetric positive definite let's let lambda a1 of a through lambda k of a be the, eigen, the ordered eigenvalues for a and let's let b have 1's on the diagonal and a constant row on the off diagonal such that row is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the off diagonals of A. Let's let lambda 1 of B through lambda K of B be the ordered eigenvalues of B. Then the eigenvalue of A, the largest eigenvalue of A is less than or equal to the largest eigenvalue of B. So everywhere in this theorem and the proof is known and perhaps widely known, but connected to the largest eigenvalues, this is the piece that I could not find a reference for and or referenced. So first, let's for the proof, let's investigate the matrix B. So B can be represented like this. Now this piece right here creates a K by K matrix of rho then this piece here subtracts the row from the diagonals and then this piece here puts a 1 down the diagonal so this is the B matrix so if we write multiply B by a column vector of 1's of k dimensions that means we get this right because we multiply 1 times each of these components well this here is k and then we can take it out front k row and we're left with that. Here are the identity matrix times the column vector of ones. We just get the column vector runs, ones, and then we can write factor out that column. Well, look at that. So that says the column of column vector of ones is an eigen vector for B with corresponding eigenvalue one minus rho plus k times rho. So thus one is an eigen vector with eigenvalue this. Now, let's let VI, for, and I goes from 1 to K minus 1, be the other K minus 1 eigenvectors and orthogonal to the column of 1's, right? So, when we multiply B times any one of these vectors, then we get this. But this piece right here, since they're orthogonal to 1, this is zero, so this piece drops out, and then this is just VI, and then we're left with this. So every one of those V's orthogonal to the one vector is an eigenvector, and it, and it has an eigenvalue of one minus rho. So thus the VI are K minus one vectors with eigenvalue one minus rho, and, this, and so it has a multiplicity of K minus one. So note then when rho is positive, then the largest eigenvalue of B would be this piece that you know, the first eigenvalue we looked at. And it can be rewritten like this. Now, next let's investigate A. And let's let X be in K dimensional space. So if we look at this quadratic form involving A, it's written like this right because a corresponds to these rho i j's now if we take out the piece where i and j are equal you know rho is one and then we that's this piece right here so then the sum of the rest when i is not equal to j is is represented like this now if we take the largest value absolute value of rho and bring it out front then this piece gets a little bit larger and if we take the absolute value of these xi and xj, it even gets a little bit bigger. 
So that's what this next step is. This is bigger than the previous step. Now, this piece here, we're going to um, represent like this. So, um, if we take the sum of the absolute value of xi, you know, squared, then we get this piece back plus the, you know, the when i and j are equal, which is this. So, for this piece equals this piece, right? Because we square, then we've we've added too many of these in, this many, so we have to subtract them back out. So this is equal to that, and of course that comes down. Now we combine this piece and this piece, which is this, and um, if we look at this piece right here and then use Cauchy's Schwartz inequality, we get this piece. So this line is a little bit bigger than this line. Now we fact, right factor out this sum of the xi from 1 to k. That's what this is, and we're left over with this. Now, if we divide both sides by this quantity here, we get this piece, right? This is left over, and then we get this. Now, this result is from Speckman 1987. I think it's Speckman Anderson Hewitt. And we get this. Now, also in from Speckman, if we maximize both sides over all x, right? Well, there's no x here, so it's just what it is. But then this piece is the largest eigenvalue of a, which then is always larger than this. But this is the largest eigenvalue of b when rho is positive. But rho, the way we define rho, it is positive. And so the result follows, and that's what we wanted to prove. Now, it's widely known that the largest eigenvalue of B is this, and the, of course the maximum eigenvalue of the correlation matrix is the largest eigenvalue. But this connection of these two matrices, I can't find a reference for. And so I can't find a reference looking at the eigenvalue specifically. Uh, so please leave a comment if you know of a reference. All right, well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.